Oh, hello and welcome to Foundation and welcome uh, to a brand new, very small series on my channel. This is going to be maybe three episodes in total because it's all time lapse and I'm already finished. So uh, this is because I know it. However, uh, if you are a fan of a very quick emerging and developing city build, this is your episode because I decided to make this all time lapse. So it's it's not really like a let's play. It's more like um, having really the, the progress in here. We have a few cuts in here but I left as much as possible in uh, to not bore you guys too much. However, I want to admit uh, that this took ages to build. So this is unmodded. I have built this totally in game with normal restrictions and limitations of the game. I have no customization mods. I have no um, sandbox mode on. I have nothing. It's completely vanilla. And this is why I'm actually pretty proud of it. So you will see a lot of changes during the whole game um, and during the whole video, so to say. Um, I'm starting off here, as you can see, on the normal starting grid, but I plan from the very beginning to build a circular town. Uh, so I'm, I've been investing over, I think, like one and a half weeks now into the game. I think in total it was like 12, 13 hours or something, because I, I made some major mistakes. Um, I'm going to talk you through, so you guys, potentially, if you haven't played the game yet, uh, can avoid these mistakes. Um, for those of you who don't know the game, it's a foundation, it's a medieval city builder game and it uh, kind of uh, follows a little bit of the good old uh, city builder approaches. So you start off with a very small settlement, you have to install a working industry and then people come into your town, uh, they immigrate and uh, you can grow because the more labor you have, the more buildings you can have, the more people you can have work in your area and you have some special buildings like churches and the lot manor over here that fulfills certain uh, special things that uh, you need in your area so for example you have someone to to get the taxes you get someone to fulfill um, yeah the to, to kind of make sure that the people go to uh, the church and you know they their belief is kind of filled uh, and all these kind of things uh, in the game you can also go into military I haven't done this yet uh, because I, I'm more like a peaceful city builder type player so that's why now uh, yeah so the, the cool bit about this game for me is that it feels very organic it has its very own play style but the thing is you cannot place down any houses so the only thing you do is you zone the houses a little bit like in city skylines um, where you can without mods uh, only zone the areas um, so without move it so to say <laughs> um, you have to zone the areas and you can see how the people build their areas themselves so it's taken right from there and the same goes also with uh, forestry and uh, in general uh, the areas where the people can gather resources uh, it's not like that you send them especially to one area it's really more the fact that you send them uh, or do you give them an area where they can do the certain job you gave them so for example if you say to someone who he, who should be like a woodcutter um and then he you cannot say go to this tree and chop that tree it's more like you, you defy this area which you can see in blue here uh, where they are allowed to chop the trees which is pretty cool because that makes for a dynamic a dynamic uh, little play style and yeah this also leads to the fact that your little settlement is actually growing a lot more organic than in other games where you really um, plan out everything you do and in this game uh, you're not really you don't really have that much of a chance to plan it out that much you know you cannot say hey I want to have this house especially at this place uh, you really have to see where the people build their houses and this is where they do it so it's the green area you can see um, this is where I allowed my people to build their houses and you need them to build their houses because if they don't uh, you don't have enough living space and no one will join your city which eventually leads to the fact that you don't have any workers and you cannot grow in general because you are missing out on goods and stuff like that so it's really Really, it's really kind of cool how this all comes together and yeah my approach from the very beginning was and you've seen that hopefully from the thumbnail uh, that I wanted to build a huge circular city now I went through a lot of mistakes and most of those mistakes were totally down to myself uh, because I'm too stupid to understand now the biggest mistake I made and I, I want to stretch that quite a bit so you guys don't do this mistake when you start building your industry and your living area this game has a different approach so it's not that people will settle everywhere where you say them uh, where you give them the uh, the area where it's allowed to build so it's not like if you have for example 
uh, a wheat farm on one side of the map and then you allow the people to build on the other side of the map, that won't work because there is a certain distance you have to cover between those two areas and people will only settle there where they find their jobs. So it's also important that the people have a close um, or like a very short uh, distance to their actual local workspace and if you don't do this it really happens that people won't build their houses and they will always complain about having no space for living and i was always like hey i've got so much space for living but no one wanted to build there and no one wanted to immigrate until i realized you have to have something to work for them in the close environment so what i did i tried to have my industry outside of the city and build my city to the inside Obviously that doesn't work because all the jobs outside only have people living there but they won't settle in the middle even though I put the churches and the markets and stuff in the middle and the game showed me that this is highly highly likely to build here and to settle here. Um, and there's a difference between highly likely to settle and highly likely to settle in the beginning. It sounds weird I know but it's like the people's first and most important uh, driver for building a house is a workspace. That's the most important thing. They won't build a house if there's no workspace around. That means you can make your city center as beautiful as you want. As long as there's nothing for them to work, no one will settle there. So what I did eventually, and you will see this in the second episode, I changed my whole industry um, to build the chains, the production chains, toward the center of uh, the of the city. So what this means, for example, let's say for the, ba uh, for the bread production. Now, when you build bread you need first of all you need a wheat farm and then you need a uh, mill and this mill is transferring the wheat into flour and the flour is going to be brought into a bakery where they use water and flour to create bread so you have three steps and the way i set it up then is i put the wheat farm to the very outskirts of the city i let them build a few houses there then i put the windmills a little bit closer to the actual city so as part of the city already and i put the bakeries very much to the center now this had the advantage that there were a lot of workspaces available in the city center for for all the bakers and stuff and only a few more to the outsides and that's kind of cool because this how this kind of guarantees how it works same goes actually for clove so you have the um cheap farm and then you have the oh god how is this even called the tailor i guess the tailor workshop and then you have the uh, the one guy who's going to make your cloth and um yeah that's pretty good um because this way you can really make people settle at the at the center and as you can see, um, this over here is my city center, which is emerging. I can only tell you that this is already the wrong version of it. So I will have a cut later on where I change it again, mostly because I made a huge mistake with uh, the church over here. And I also made a different mistake um, in terms of which kind of buildings I have there. I'm, I'm going to explain this a little bit more in detail once once the cut was there. I left this in so you... I have the time to talk about this mistake, so I have this as a kind of, kind of little reminder. Now, um, I, I again, I without this knowledge I just gave you with all the how the building works and how the people uh, decide to join your city, um, I was going way too quick into the city center and built all the lot manor stuff here uh, to make it really look nice. But yeah, again, I was missing out on bakeries. I was missing out on on tailor workshops, I was missing out on all the other things. Cheesemaker, for example, is another another building I was moving toward the center of the city. Um, and all these kind of things weren't taken account in this first design, so I needed to redo the design. And yeah, as I said, if we would have done this all as a let's play approach, this would have been easily up to 12, 13 episodes. And I guess, you know, this is not really the idea of it. Um, it's kind of boring for you to watch and it's kind of boring for me as well, because I'm, you know, it. Playing it myself is very relaxing in the evening, but once you start recording, it feels a bit more official, um, and so it's uh, it's kind of weird. And I I'm happy that I decided to do it in, as a time lapse, as a full time lapse this time. Now you can see it's starting to be a bit more of a star form here, and uh, here we go already with a little bit of a change, uh, the first change. And I realized, okay, I need to build. Um, for me a kind of guidance so I know where actually I wanted to go uh, have the alleys go and how I make the shape of this overall city and yeah all of a sudden I realized okay it's not gonna work out and here you can see this is the second attempt um, of my of my city layout and this is really at a point in time where I was gathering really great resources I had no issue at all with money and stuff like that I went down that road and I, I 
let me tell you, I, oh God, I was hitting a point of uh, really bad times again um, because I was focusing so much on building here and I was not paying any attention to money and that was a huge mistake because let me tell you, first off, you should not buy too many territories before you are not really using them. What I was doing, I was making great money and so I was buying the whole map. You know, I was purchasing every territory I could so it made sense to me. Now what you should do with more money is build more loud manners and build more treasuries. Try to gather as much money as you can to have in your account. Because the more territories you buy, the more taxes you pay for the territories. And they are pretty heavy taxes. So what I needed to do, I needed to sell, I think, 10 of the territories I already purchased. You know, I not, I, not only that I uh, lost the money, I also lost a lot more money because I had these territories without a purpose. And that was really a bad idea because it, it really goes heavy on your taxes in a later stage of the game. And this is why... I then decided to uh, sell them, first of all, again, and repurchase them as soon as I need them. Because at the beginning, you don't really need them. Yeah, then I was also doing a little different thing here. I was building various little market stalls. Now, the idea that I had at the beginning is to have one huge market in the center of the city and let everyone come there and, and live there and, and purchase the stuff. That's not how the game works. Um, the more little market spaces you have, the more likely people will settle around those markets as well, given there is a workspace available in the closed environment as well. And um, yeah, so what I did is I planned out my uh, ring design in a, in a bit more nice way by putting down more market spaces and just in general having a bit more of a nicer layout de decision here. And I can only tell that this works out in the long term, but you really have to have patience. You really have to have... Uh, the patients to look into each and every individual little space and what you have to give them. So yeah, it's it's all about refiguring and, and retrying where you can put which building and yeah, hopefully your people will act accordingly because you, you have no control over that, okay? So at a certain point, I started deleting some of the buildings that were going too much to the south because I wanted to make them move up in the north again to go to my city center. But also that didn't work because... As I said, the workspace they were originally settling, you know, that's the reason why they settled, is way too much in the south, so you, you won't get them go to the top. So as soon as I deleted all their buildings, it happened that they were complaining they had no space for living, even though you can see there is enough space for living. I was just painting these green areas. So it's quite of a complicated workflow I had here. I could have had it all so much easier by just using mods and using sandbox mode, but no. That was not the plan. That was not what I wanted to do. And honestly, I couldn't have given you all these tips and little hints here. And I really, I do want to encourage you. If you haven't played the game, honestly, trust me, try it. Give it a chance because this game makes you addicted in a second. And I guess every one of you have some time now. So really try it. It's such a cozy little experience to play the game. Um, and every session I played so far is turning out to be completely different. It's not really repetitive because of the way the game behaves. It really has a high uh, value in terms of uh, replayability. It's super cool. And I can only encourage you to try various designs, try... Uh, playing around, fiddling around with the mechanics in the game. You can also, the game gives you a lot of freedom in terms of building. So basically, there is no real hitbox. You can move every building into each other how much uh, you want. It's no it's no big deal. There's, there's nothing... It, it's actually the exact opposite of Jurassic World Evolution, where you have like 20 meters of distance between each and individual building. In this game, you can move them all into each other. It doesn't matter. So you, if you want to build like a... Um, tailor workshop out of three tailor workshops and just move them into each other to have like a very much more dense area you can do so if you want or you can build nice little monasteries and stuff like they're really cool there's a lot of a lot of potential in there that you can unleash uh, with your creativity so it's exactly the game I love and I really hate myself for letting the game down for so long but yeah again the main reason is it takes up your time it eats up your time uh, which is cool because that means that you're enjoying the game but uh, yeah, for, for making content, it's not always the best that it eats up your time so much. But yeah, you know, having the time at the moment. And honestly, it, it was a very welcome, uh, different experience from the Planet Games and also from City Skylines. It's just, you know, it's, it's a little bit less finicky, if you will. Um, and it's a lot more explorative. I think that's really, that's really what you um, 
could say about that game. This game is a lot more explorative and it gives you the time to think about things. It gives you the time to relax, sit down and just have, you know, have a go. Let, let just go of, of what you're doing there and, and just try some things. You are not able to destroy anything. Also, you're not running into any performance issues. <laughs> it's also something to consider. This game is not really heavy on your on your computer system. So you can also play that game on weaker systems, which is also pretty cool. And yeah, all these kind of things um, taken into account makes up for a really cool game. And I really hope that you guys enjoy this. Uh, time lapse and this series make sure to drop all the comments down below again as for the youtube algorithm you know the game i don't want to repeat this all the time but let me know if you like the time lapse approach and have you played the game uh, have you heard of it even and if not why not and uh, please tell me um which kind of uh, city builder game is your favorite like uh, have you have you played all the city builder games what about anno what about uh, yeah city skylands as well but also age of empires empire earth and all these kind of games what's your favorite and do you have any any more tips regarding uh, this game have you have you seen some major mistakes i did uh, in the time lapse as well if so let me know in the comments down below because i'm you know i'm not a pro i'm absolutely not a pro i'm just a gamer like you trying to do the best trying to get the best out of it and i really hope that you guys didn't appreciate it now that's the end of my commentary and also the end of this time lapse we'll see each other quite soon the second episode is already cut already recorded so might be up in a few days and the third one is about to be finished as well soon all right Hope you enjoyed it and uh, make sure to check out the other content of the channel because there's quite a lot at the moment. So if you have some boring times, make sure to check out the channel. There's plenty of stuff to enjoy for you. And as always, let me know in the comments down below if you've got any major feedback regarding the channel. Very much appreciate it. I see you in the next one. Have a good time, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy. Goodbye.